Hola señoritas, welcome back to my wedding lessons. I am Hugo Alejandro, your Colombian wedding coach. And uh, this, by the way, is Elvis. I didn't introduce him last time, but I thought it was about time that you guys meet my trusty microphone companion. And I know what you're thinking. I'm not mental, I promise. I just thought it would be a suitable choice for such a sharp little guy. So anyways, uh, and together today we're going to be talking about what to do right after you said yes. I have titled this, I said yes, now what? Well, don't worry, I have the checklist just for you. So the first thing, the first order of business is for you to take a moment to yourself to please relax. And we're gonna dream together about what your wedding is gonna be. And then we're gonna start making certain choices so that when you get there, you're gonna enjoy it like none other. So let's get started with a little bit of my wedding lessons. So I decided to make uh, a different set or viewpoint for when we have checklist. And this is uh, the journal, the official journal set of my wedding lesson. So uh, here goes nothing. Boom, here we go. So this is officially our journal. I'm going to show you the checklist in just a minute. But yes, I have to admit, I made the tea steam a little bit. I just, this is kind of the vibe that I want to go for for our videos. I want it to be really fun, really relaxing. So hopefully it's working. And with that, let's start with our early planning checklist. This is the journey of a thousand miles. We're going to take it one step at a time. No reason to get anxious, no reason to get stressed. Let's just take it one bite at a time. At first, I want you to think macro. We're going to think season, style, budget, and guest list. And from here, we're going to get a little bit more specific. But for now, and on this video, I just want to start with kind of the more general view, the eagle side view of uh, wedding planning, and then we're going to get more specific. So the first order of business will be to discover your style. Everybody has their favorites. And hopefully by now you have been to enough weddings to start seeing, okay, I like that, I don't like that. Sometimes they, I don't like, it's as much of a, a, an important list to make than the likes. So make notes, if you haven't already, make notes on the things that you like, the things that you don't like at uh, certain weddings, uh, especially when you have been there in person, that makes a big difference. Uh, now for discovering your wedding style, I'm gonna recommend that you go to the search engine of your choice, maybe Google, and uh, just type wedding style quizzes. And you're gonna see several pop up and I don't want you to get married to the opinion of just one website, but go ahead and take maybe three or four. And if you start seeing a pattern that you are gravitating towards a certain style, then that's probably the right answer for you. When you have your style a little bit more decided, and if you haven't already, then start making a Pinterest board of the things that jump at you as you browse through Pinterest. And uh, let's see what your favorites are. Now, at this point, all the uh, planners are just rolling their eyes because, man, we've had some experiences. This is the equivalent of, uh, say, a uh, Spotify list for a DJ, where sometimes we get uh, an input of so many hundreds of choices that is basically still a shot in the dark. So I'm going to tell you, start with kind of a more generic wedding uh, board and then from there I want you to get into more specific um, so basically generic and then make a board that is your favorite selections from the more general one okay and then from there we're gonna head to uh, uh, choosing the season now once you have your style figured out there might be you know out of four seasons you can narrow it down a little bit uh, 
that when it comes to seasons, you have to also keep in mind, and this is honestly worth another more detailed video, but wedding season in most countries, especially that have weather seasons, gravitate towards the nicer side of the year in regards to weather. So winter, for example, in my part of the world is not as popular for weddings. Therefore, it's also typically a little bit cheaper to do a wedding during those months. Uh, typically from spring break, so mid-March to early April, all the way through almost Thanksgiving, so November, mid-November, uh, that is wedding season for us and it dips a little bit in the middle August July it gets a little bit hot around here so not as many weddings during those months but yeah think about the peak months so in my case in the Midwest of the United States uh, May June September October those are peak months you know a third of the year constitutes over 50% of the weddings for us in this uh, part of the world so keep that in mind as you are selecting your season because if you go for peak months uh, you're going to pay a little bit of a premium so from there Again, choose the season, uh, selecting the right season for the flowers you like, for the food you like is going to be a big deal because if those are readily available for you, you're not going to be paying a premium for them. And then we're starting to talk about budget. That's going to be the next item in line. And uh, this is going to be one of the less pleasant parts to talk about, but we have to be realistic. Let's meet with parents if they're going to be helping or anybody in your life that might be willing to contribute or it may be just up to the two of you to pay for the wedding. So let's get numbers together and I want you to think specifically about the wedding. Sometimes splitting wedding and honeymoon a little bit can help you get a little bit farther on the wedding part of things and maybe doing more of a local honeymoon so that you're not taking two big hits at the same time uh, more on that later but again we want to talk to everybody who's contributing get an idea of how much they're willing to contribute and get a number range that uh, is gonna be close to what we're gonna be spending now I'm gonna tell you kind of a funny truth about wedding budgets and is that basically every bride that I have ever interviewed at the finalizing meeting uh, you know when I'm DJing for them says we blew our budget a long time ago so be prepared for that um, you if you have a dad in the uh, in the picture you know be nice to them because more than likely you are going to be blowing the budget uh, but yeah again you have to be realistic I don't recommend that you get overly in debt for uh, your wedding but anyways more on that in a later video uh, and then once we talk budget then we need to also start developing your guest list uh, your number of guests directly will affect the budget. There is a cost per guest, and I'm gonna be making a very detailed video on wedding numbers coming up. Uh, but yes, the more people you invite, the more you're gonna spend. So keep that in mind. If you want a huge party, I hope you also have a pretty decent budget. Um, the number of guests is gonna impact uh, the venue that you should book, the food that you should book, the number of uh, um, speakers that you should have in the room. So there are a lot of different decisions, but as you start making this list, let's focus on, okay, who are the people that we absolutely have to invite and who are kind of the optionals. But as you make this list and as you go to the different weddings, I want you to keep something in mind and is, please make a list of at least 20 really fun people, okay? It, be it your wedding party or just people that you're gonna invite that you think can make it, but I, as you go to weddings in the next few weeks or months before the wedding, um, I want you to make a mental note of, man, that guy was really on the dance floor. That was the life of the party. Anybody that you think is gonna be the life of the party, get as many of those in your invites as possible uh, if you want a really fun party and vibe towards the latter portion of the evening. And then once we start building the uh, 
budget, the guest list, then we're starting to get ready to pick some dates. Flexibility is gonna be the key. If you pick one specific date that has to be it and you're planning with less than 12 months, you might be pay paying a premium or also um, just gonna have a really hard time finding a venue available in short notice. And as you also are looking at dates, I want you to keep two things in mind. The first one is that most people are looking for Saturdays. We have 52 Saturdays in the year and the wedding industry lives for Saturdays. We only have so many and many times that's why it, wedding services are expensive is because it's so lopsided towards the weekend part of uh, the week so uh, most people want saturday so if you are on a tight budget consider not only off season but also not a saturday for example the second thing i want you to keep in mind is that uh, thursdays and fridays are very underrated you can have virtually the same experience mostly on fridays but also on a thursday because it's got that you know almost end of the week vibe and sometimes people if they party hard on thursday they call in sick the next day or just take it off but uh, yeah many times again thursdays and fridays are just as good and uh, the key to that there are multiple but i'll give you one preview is to make sure that you don't start at a time that doesn't allow people to not only get off work but also go home and clean up get ready and then come because if they feel pressured or against the clock to come to your reception many people are just gonna say you know what i'd rather not go than be late so anyway so that is my uh early planning checklist i hope this is helpful to you now i don't know if you are like me but many times when i have a checklist that i am looking at in a video um, i try to take a screenshot so i made a uh, screen just for that so hopefully this helps you oh right there um, and uh, yeah go ahead and take a screenshot uh, crop me out of the picture if you want or not and then uh, yes this is uh, the first of many checklists that i will be making to hopefully you know ease the anxiety and the stress again i have uh, in my career over the last uh, 12 years DJed almost a thousand weddings and I am also the uh, owner of a wedding venue so from experience and with much love uh, I want to help you and virtually hold your hand so that uh, in the midst of so many other voices you have an encouraging voice right here to help ease all those uh, worries and we're gonna get through this and it's gonna be so much fun and you're gonna get to it and enjoy it so thank you so much for watching don't forget if uh, you find my uh, videos helpful i would very much appreciate if you give me a like subscribe and then click the little bell so that you get notifications on not just uh, what the uh, engine thinks that is relevant to you and uh, from here uh, we're gonna be making some more content i want your comments as well if you have questions if you think i'm wrong on something be nice but i definitely want a discussion and a community here so that we can continue to uh, make videos that are relevant to you and then okay so from last time i forgot about this but um in previous experiences on youtube uh, i've been recommended to always end with a tag so i hope by now you see that i don't take myself too seriously and this is supposed to be somewhat funny i'm exaggerating my heritage to make it a little bit you know light-hearted uh, so i'm gonna do a funny tag at the end of uh, most of the videos unless i forget so here goes nothing i don't always give wedding tips, but when I do, I do it right here and my wedding lessons. Let's get the party started.